up now. You're all going to sign up tonight. Okay? So we're going to get you in the game so you're not messing around anymore. Okay? All right. Very good. Um, let's jump right in because right now we've got one hour. Thank you, man. Uh, let's get mad at me again. That's fantastic. Hey, good job. And uh, congratulations to uh, the parks. That's, that's great. Another qualification for Team Elite status. It's just uh, a way to do it. It's fantastic. We have the greatest business in the world. It's the greatest opportunity I've ever seen. I've been involved now 21 years in about three weeks or something like that. June 15th was my, my 21st anniversary in the company. And uh, it has been an amazing ride for 21 years. And the most exciting part to me is I think we're just beginning. I think that really, from, from where we're at today to $5 billion, is going to be the most success the company's ever seen. Obviously, we're going to grow about $3.5 billion in the next uh, seven years, eight years, nine years, whatever it's going to take us to do it. But we're going to do it. And we're not going to stop at $5 billion. We'll be a $10 billion company someday. And uh, I'm going to be here when it happens. I don't know if you will or not. Unfortunately, a lot of you that are here tonight, you won't even be here in a couple of years because you don't get it, and uh, you won't commit, and uh, maybe you've not finished, you know, things you've started in your life. So today we're going to talk about being finishers. It's easy to start anything, isn't it? Real easy to start. It's hard to finish, isn't it? That's the hard part. So uh, I'm going to encourage everybody to make a little note on your notes tonight that you want to be a finisher. You want to finish the things you, you start in this life, and you've got to be careful what you commit to so that you make sure you can finish. And uh, be serious about your commitment. You know. We're going to talk about uh, something we've been using in the United States that uh, I did not invent. It's something that we've adopted because I watched a group in my downline do so well by codifying basic concepts that we need to do in this business into a system. And they did this in Hungary, a country with average incomes of four to five hundred dollars U.S. equivalent per month, and these people went from zero to 50 million in sales in about five years in a market like that where people really don't have very much money. And I asked myself, how can they afford the products? Where do they come up with the money to do this business? How do they do this? How have they accomplished what they've done? One of our leaders in Thailand, John Emeron, uh, called me one day and I just had this thought. I said, John, would you consider going to Budapest? Hungary and being the guest speaker at their next next success Olympics that they're going to have in a few months. And he accepted to do that and he went there and was blown away watching System 7 in action at their premier event called Success Olympics. And uh, he took copious notes, picked their brains, went back to Bangkok and instituted System 7 in Bangkok about a year ago. Bangkok's the number one fastest growing country in Southeast Asia today. And uh, they're just knocking the cover off the ball up there doing huge volumes and growing very rapidly. And I attended a Success Olympics in Bangkok in April, right before all the riding in the main streets down there. And uh, it was fantastic what they did. 2,500 people in the room, and it was just an amazing thing. So I'm not here today to uh, say to all of you, you, you know, you should do System 7. What I want to do is just explain it to you so you understand it, so you can see what it is. There's valuable concepts in here that you can take with you today to build your business. And these are things that we've done, we've done most of these, I would say, over the years at various times, but it's just great to have it all put in one place, simply explained, very si simple system to follow, and so I want to walk you through that today. I hope you take notes. I hope you've got a pen and a paper out and you're able to write these down. When I go to Asia, I don't have to tell anybody to pull out a pen and take notes. You know, people up there, they just kind of do it. Uh, when I come down here, or I'm in the U.S., I have to remind everybody, let's take some notes. Okay, you're here to learn, and I'm going to give you a challenge right now. I want you to take, take, pay attention, take enough notes, and decide at the end of this training what you're going to change. Because if you sit here for the next hour and you don't change anything from what we talk about and what we hear today, then this was a waste of an hour. So anytime you go to an event like this, you ought to go there with a question in your mind. And the question ought to be, what am I going to do different from this event? What am I going to learn and take home with me that I will do different when I leave here tonight so that it becomes something effective? So that we both gain something out of being here and spending our time this evening. This is what we call the workflow of System 7. This is the process we take any new person 
through uh, when we want to start them up in the business. So those of you that raised your hands a second ago and haven't signed up yet, we're going to get you signed up tonight, okay? And so you're going to purchase a product package. And my history in this business has always been that I don't sponsor anybody personally unless they have at least a thousand points in their name. A thousand point package is the minimum that I actually work with people with. And so uh, you may sponsor people for less than that, and you might have a different package than that. I'm not going to sit here tonight and tell you what package to sponsor people with, but I'm going to tell you that personally for me, uh, that's something that I want to have happen with anybody that I enroll in the business for a whole bunch of reasons I'll cover in a few minutes. So that's what we're going to do is get you enrolled and get you signed. And then the first thing is we want to go ahead and set a goal. Now, most people are brand new to their skin. They just join, so they don't even know what their goal should be. And so what we do is we give them a goal. And the goal is we want them to be a Ruby executive in the first 120 days. In the first four months of joining the company, we'd like them to shoot for Ruby executive. For those of you that are brand new, that means that you get in the business and you achieve the first leadership position of executive, and then you find four people that do the same thing. So we're going to replicate ourselves four times and become Ruby executives. I want to give you some statistics from the US market and Canadian market that I think you'll find interesting. What percentage of the people that do become Rubies do you think did it in 120 days? 28%. 28% of all the new Rubies last year did it in the first four months of them joining the company. Pretty, pretty impressive. The other 72% took up to the rest of the whole year to make that happen. And that's OK, too. If it takes you a year to become a Ruby, that's okay. Some people go faster, some people go slower. The key is that you go and you don't quit and you finish. That's the key. So we want to say to brand new people, let's put you on a 120-day Ruby plan. And we actually have a 120-day Ruby plan journal that has 120 days of pages in it. It has all the key vital statistics that we want to track, like the names of the people they called that day. How many contacts they made during the week? How many presentations they made? How many demos they did during the week and consequently the month? Right? How many people they enrolled in the business as new distributors? How many letters of intent they were able to get from those people? And if there were any new executives that came in their downline during that month? And so we're going to be able to have the data we need when it's time to sit down and coach those people. We can see what they're actually doing. And so we have a 120-day plan, uh, Ruby plan journal. It's uh, $25 is what we charge for those. People buy five, we charge $20. You don't have them here, but if you guys want to do System 7, maybe you can convince Brand and some of the other leaders that maybe you guys should you know, get on it. We're happy to give you anything we have. You only have to agree to one thing. Okay, in this company, when we do sales aids as distributors in, in one team global and System 7, uh, we have a commitment that no single distributor will ever make a profit from any of these tools. They'll never make any profit from any DVDs, CDs, you know, Ruby concept. Well, it looks like we need a, a battery plugged in here in the brand. Otherwise, we might lose everything. Three times, it's wrong. All right. Once we get the goal in place, uh, I'm, I'm also, when I do goal setting, I like to sit and talk to my new distributors and kind of find out what they're really thinking beyond 120 days. How big is their vision? What are they really looking to accomplish? I'd like to kind of hear them verbalize that. I need to hear them verbalize that for a couple of reasons. What's the number one thing that is most limited when you start doing this business? What's the thing you have not enough of? Time. Especially when you begin, most people have their day jobs still, so they're doing this part-time on the side or evenings and weekends, and they've got an hour a day or a, a two hours a day or something that they're willing to commit to the business. So you have no time to waste. You've got to make really efficient use of every minute you've got that you can dedicate to your new skin business. So when I sit down with people, it's really kind of an interview. I'm not really interested in sponsoring anybody unless I hear the right things out of their mouth. I'm kind of seeing if I can afford to spend my time with that person. And so I'm going to make judgment calls. And a lot of times that's a hard thing. People have a little block in their brain about making judgment calls because we've been taught, don't judge. But I've got to tell you something. That's not what the scripture says. It says, don't judge unrighteously. You have to make judgment calls. Every day in your life you've got to decide what you're going to do and where you're going to go and who you're going to associate with and who you're not going to associate with. 
And so I'm listening. When I talk to my damn line, I'm listening all the time to the tone of their voice. I'm listening to the kind of words that come out of their mouth. And the whole time I'm sitting there saying to myself, is that person in the right place where I can afford to spend my time with them? Or do I have to forget this person right now? Because this isn't a hobby for me. This is how I feed my family. So I'm not screwing around here. This is a business for me. Maybe, maybe you have time to play with this, okay? If this is just a fun little toy for you and you want to play with it, great. You can do whatever you want. But if you're here to build a business, you better treat it like a business. And you've got to hold yourself accountable and you've got to hold your downline accountable for what they're doing. And if they can't do it or they can't perform, then maybe you have to make a judgment call that you can't spend time with them. And you need to move on to other people that you're going to spend the time that are going to perform and actually do it. So those are the things that I think about when I listen to what people are doing. And it's really a partnership. If I sponsor you, I basically tell you this. I'll match you energy for energy. You put in a ton of energy, I'll be there. You push down the gas pedal, I'll push it down. I'll run with you. Same speed you want to run. You let off the gas pedal, I'm letting off the gas pedal. You're not putting people in front of me all the time so that I'm working with you and your downline. Trust me, I'm working with somebody else and I am creating your competition. That's what I'm doing. So you've got to keep me busy. All right? You need to call me. I'm not going to call you every day. I expect you to call me every day. You don't call me every day. If you, a few days go by, a week goes by, you probably never hear from me again. Because I'm just not going to sit and put up with it. If you're not going to plug in, you're not going to work, you're not going to trade like a business, you're not going to be serious, then that's okay. That's your choice, but I'm going to move on and work with people that are serious. Don't I owe it to the ones in my downline that are serious, that will follow through, to give them my time? It's only fair, isn't it? Sure it is. And so that's what we have to do. Let's talk about point number two. As soon as we've got the goal, we've got them set up, they understand what we expect. And then number two is that we need to identify the contacts. The whole business that you're going to build is going to come from your contact base. And the contact base are people you already know. Running ads in the newspaper doesn't work. Trying to buy leads off the internet is a joke. Okay? You already have all the people, all the contacts you need to build a global business in New Scan. Because people know people who know people who know people. And so when I explain this to people and try to get them to understand what we're saying, I describe the process of putting together a puzzle. Has everybody here put a puzzle together? Anybody not put a puzzle together here in this room? Okay, good. It's a common denominator worldwide, it seems. So it works. Good analogy. Everybody, when you, get, when you decide that you're going to put a puzzle together, what's the first thing you do? 